Hi everybody, how's it going? This is Javier, getting back to you with another video on the common diseases. And today, what I want to talk about is diabetes. However, I want to take a different approach. And instead of just speaking of the usual signs and symptoms, what I want to do is talk a little bit more about the, the mind-body component, and I'll explain more about what mind-body medicine is. Um, there's also a description below, which explains a little bit more of uh, as to what mind-body medicine is. So I want to talk about diabetes in this perspective because I think it brings up a lot of uh, interesting keynotes, interesting insights to this disease that is very common in the U.S. All right, so without saying much, let's get started. So, interestingly, fun fact of the day is the, the etymology of diabetes. Diabetes is actually from the Greek word, meaning to go through, and mellitus is from the Latin, meaning honey. That is the actual, the full name of diabetes, diabetes mellitus. Because there's also a diabetes insipidus, which is another kind of disease that doesn't happen from the pancreas, but rather from the um, hypothalamus. It's another hormone involved. All right, so in this case, we're going to talk about the mind, body, and diabetes. Objectives, I think this was, this is good to uh, mention because it's going to help us stay on track as to what this is about. I have been doing YouTube videos, I'm sorry, Facebook live videos every day at around 8 o'clock. So if you haven't seen those, then you know what I've been talking about for the past five days. So first thing, what we're going to do, learn the origins of diabetes and the pancreas. Understand the research of how meditation, which is part of mind body medicine, helps with support of diabetes. Understand why people with diabetes may not want to change from a more psychological perspective or emotional. And new insights into the personalities of a diabetic individual from a psychological, psychi psychiatric studies and other observations. So first things first, the cortisol story. So cortisol is a stress hormone. Okay, that's the first thing you have to know. Stress hormone comes from our, our adrenal glands. And we have a moment of stress where we have a flight or flight when we're fighting something or running away from something, our cortisol spikes. And when that happens, our blood sugars become high in our blood. And because of that, insulin becomes high. So basically, what is saying that stress requires sugar. But can your body control it in a state of diabetes? Because with diabetes, the production of insulin is diminished to non-existent. So if this is not there anymore, then it's going to be a vicious cycle of blood sugars and cortisol rising more and more. And not being able to control your blood sugars is going to cause serious complications. Here's another nice chart that I found versus a short-term stress. This is when you are, say, running away for your life. But then there's also something, there's prolonged stress. Yeah, let me choose another color for that. There. So when, they, when there's prolonged stress, all I want you to focus is uh, this is, uh, of course, the uh, where the adrenal gland right here and here as well. And then there's something called glu glucocorticoids. Sorry, I didn't mean to erase that. But basically, it's these two things here that says proteins and fats converted to glucose or broken down for energy and increased blood glucose. 
So when you have a state of stress that is permanent, it's gonna keep, it's gonna stay in your system for a while. So your blood sugars are gonna keep rising slowly and slowly and slowly. And if insulin is not being made, which is what a diabetic cannot do, at least the pancreas won't be able to produce, then the sugar levels are gonna keep increasing. Why am I speaking of this? It's because of the research on meditation. How meditation can help with diabetes. So first, meditation indirectly reduces blood sugars by reducing or normalizing cortisol. In other words, cortisol, stress inflammation, which we kind of talked about. And what I want to mention too is that if you do a walking meditation, like 10 minutes of calm walking outside of your house after dinner or before sleep, that actually helps to regulate blood sugars because it has been proven that exercise and movement also helps regulate blood sugars. So a walking meditation is basically going outside, taking a walk, and just be aware of every step. Just walk slowly, look down on the ground, don't try to analyze everything you see, just enjoy the moment. And only doing this for 10 minutes will actually cause a lot of, will first give you to move and reduce your stress levels, which in this case will help with the cortisol. All right, getting into the history of diabetes, which I talked about in the uh, Facebook videos more, but I'm just gonna give you a quick summary here. So from ancient Egypt, this observation came from Hesira, which is an Egyptian physician, and he recorded frequent urination causing emaciation and ants became attracted to its urine. Like I put a picture right here. I thought that was a very interesting study and it makes sense in my case. In Chinese medicine, Chinese is pronounced um, xiao ke. Xiao and ke. Ke means thirst right here. And then xiao means emaciation or wasting. And in Ayurveda, which is Indian medicine, traditional Indian medicine, the word was madumeda, which means sweet urine. So hopefully this doctor is not drinking urine, but it kind of looks like it is. Let's just say it's apple juice. But regardless, the symptoms of sweet urine, emaciation thirst, and frequent urination, these are all symptoms that we clinically can deduce today for somebody who has diabetes. And then in the modern times, in 1989, only about 100 years ago, was the discovery of insulin by Minkowski and von Merin uh, by dissecting a dog pancreas. So it was only 100 years ago that we know that insulin is responsible for diabetes. The next thing I wanna show you is the pancreas because that's the origin of diabetes, the pancreas. I think this picture is very self-explanatory because it shows um, the actual human body, the stomach right here. I don't want to really write about on it, but here I'm going to highlight this stuff. There we go. So stomach right here and then behind the stomach is the pancreas. And the pancreas, here we go, a little more, no details, has the head, the body and the tail. And here there's something called bile duct and pancreatic duct. So the pancreatic duct is what secretes the juices of the pancreas. So history of the pancreas, like where it came from. Actually, it was first described by um, by the Greek Herophilus, but he didn't name it. And it was in 310 BC. But then the Roman physician called Rufus named it pancreas and pancreas in Greek pan means all and kreas means flesh so all flesh because they were not sure what it did and the only thing they were able to find in the dissections was 
that it secreted some kind of juice that was very similar to saliva. That's it. That was, and of course, they didn't spend much time because they they focus more on the vital organs. In the East, however, it is a mystery about these sections because it was taboo, therefore forbidden. So anyone in caught during dissection was probably penalized by death. And then in the occult, more about the metaphysics aspect of what the pancreas is. People usually say that the pancreas is the organ of stability and is the organ that resists change. So those are the themes that people go through. Stability and resisting change. So more about this is on the personality of a diabetic. So diabetes and depression. Um, some of the studies of people with diabetes and depression have actually been very promising to suggest a correlate between the two. Those with depression are at risk of type 2 diabetes and those with type 2 diabetes are at risk of developing Depression, sorry, that was supposed to be depression, not diabetes. But you see what I mean by this. So even those who don't have diabetes but have depression, they are at risk of developing diabetes. And I'll explain a little bit of to perhaps why. And then in a study from a psychiatric doctor, a uh, study found in type 8 children with type 1 diabetes. So this doctor... I think he got about 55 subjects and about 45 or so of these um, children who had type 1 diabetes usually had type 1, type A personality. So very scattered, very um, very hyper, like quote unquote hyper. But then I came across something from an Ayurvedic and Tibetan perspective from their medicine. And they made a comparison that type 1 diabetics, and by the way, type 1 diabetics are the ones who cannot make insulin whatsoever. It's similar to a Vata disorder or in Tibetan, a wind disorder. So what this means, a wind or Vata, it means that they're their mind tends to be very busy with wanting things, not being able to let go of things, um, very, being very scattered, very cloudy, uh, very spontaneous. If okay, and type two diabetics, it's similar to a kapha or a phlegm disorder, and kaphas, in their mental perspective, they tend to be more stagnant, can't move, they're narrow-minded, they don't want to go anywhere because they're afraid of change. So I thought that was a very interesting connection because this kapha kind of connects it to the depression and diabetic. And a lot of people who have kapha disorders or phlegm disorders, they tend to have those symptoms of depression and diabetes as well. They tend to eat foods that are high in sweets and um, bad fats, hydrogenated fats, which cause weight and, and depression, really. So to finish up, diabetes and pancreas. So I want you to just think a little bit about what we talked about today and just consider what is going on in your life right now you know what mental afflictions what's what's the theme that's going on in your life is something going on that's require you to resist change if you know somebody who has diabetes or you are you are diabetic yourself is it something that you have despair you're feeling hopeless some people will say you've lost the sweetness of life, not being able to enjoy life. Just consider it. I'm not saying that those are the causes, but definitely the emotional component needs to be addressed 
for a complete recovery or a complete management of a disease to happen. I also want you to integrate awareness in your life. Makes life simple again. Like after dinner and go out for a 10 minute walk and just walk. Don't think about what's going to happen when you come back. Don't think about the work of the next day. Don't think about your deadlines that you're missing or you're overdue or that are about to come. Just walk. Literally walk. When you walk, sit when you sit, eat when you eat. Like those are making life simple again. Easier said than done, of course. But being aware helps. And again, same thing. When you walk, you walk. When you sit, you sit. When you eat, you eat. Your mind needs to be walking as well, sitting also, and eating too. Again, this is a little slide of the references as to where I got this information. And I found this book called Psychological Factors Affecting Medical Conditions by Alan Studimir, which I made the connection, which I found the connection between diabetes and depression and type A personalities, kids. All right, so that sums it up for today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, learn some new insights from about diabetes please don't forget to click the subscribe or like button that way you can get more updates for what's coming up next if you want to further discuss this topic with me privately or would like to know how to approach your diabetes naturally or other diseases please feel free to send me an email i can do a quick consultation and remember that as naturopaths, we do not only address physical symptoms or mental symptoms. We do both. We do a mix of both. All right. So hope to see you next time. And thank you for, for watching. Until then, bye-bye.